mighty yes, name of Lord. Jesus, God, I pray, oh God, oh Father, that this service will be Jesus. a whole God, like none yes, other, Lord. my God. I pray that your heart. presence, my yeah. God, touch us God, to touch us God to touch your people my God in a special way God Thank Father you, you know the yeah. situations you know their troubles God you yes, know what Jesus. their needs my God you know God what they come oh God in your presence God you know what they want to receive my God I pray my God Lord Jesus that you pour upon them my God, you pour it upon them you meet them at the point of your need my God Lord Father Oh Lord Jesus, we know God that your ears, oh God, are not heavy, God. Now that your hand is short, my God, Lord Father. God, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray, my God, that you, oh God, will take control of the service, my God. God, we surrender everything into your hands this morning, my God, that your perfect will be done, mighty God. Lord, this morning we lift up, oh God, Lord Father, worship us, my God. my living God this morning. I know as we come into the house of God, we come at a heart of expectation this morning. Amen? Hallelujah. Even to our online viewers, those who are viewing our online stream, wherever you are this morning, there's no distance in prayer. Amen? We serve a God that is omnipresent. Amen? A God that is omnipresent this morning. Wherever Amen. you are this morning, He's able. He's able. Amen? God is able this morning. To meet you at the point of your need this morning. Hallelujah. At this time, I'd like to welcome the worship team this morning. As we go into a time of praise this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says in His presence there is fullness of joy. Amen. Hallelujah. And there are pleasures forever. Hallelujah. And we want to sing this song this morning. Part of the song says God is fighting for us. He's pushing back the darkness. And if you would let him in this morning, he will take up every darkness and push it back this morning. Hallelujah. The song also said, I will live, I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ lives in me. Amen. So let that come alive in you this morning. As we sing this song, what you ought to clap and make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
God is good, amen. Yeah. And all the time, God is good. Shall we all remain standing this morning as we get into the word of God this morning? The scripture this morning is taken from the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, and Genesis chapter 3, 1 to 15. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. When you find it, shall we all say amen? Amen. So, Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, and it goes like this. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day of thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Amen. So we all go to Genesis chapter 3, verses 1. And it goes like this. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye not ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods. Come unto you, thee. Amen. Knowing good and evil and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and did eat and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and this so fig leaves together and made themselves aprons and they heard the voice of, Lord, of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden and the Lord God called upon Adam and said unto him where art thou and he said I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself and he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree? Whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou givest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou art done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise the head of this, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for your for understanding your word, my God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit which reveal your word unto us, my God, and teaches us and lead us, lead us and guide us, my God, Lord Father. In your mighty name I pray, O oh Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. You all may be seated this morning. Amen? Hallelujah. At this time, you know, we go into our announcement as you know we invite you all to come out to all services amen you know we need god amen we need jesus amen hallelujah so our sunday service starts at 9 a.m amen we 
go on to our Bible study, which takes place on Wednesdays from 7 p.m. Our Friday, Fire Friday service begins at 7 p.m. on Friday. Amen. Fire Fridays. You know, we have our Easter Good Friday service and our Resurrection Sunday service. Hallelujah. And added to that as well, you know, we live in, in the last days. Amen. The signs, are, the signs are, are all over to see. Amen. The Bible says to look, to watch and see, to watch and pray. Watch. Watch for the signs. You know, to walk circumspectly, not as fools, but wise as in the time for the evil day has come. And we are seeing what is going on. Amen. So our, our dear pastor, on Tuesday at 7 p.m., him together with Pastor Lisa, they would be discussing end times talks, end time prophecies. Amen. Hallelujah on Facebook. So we invite you all to take part in each service because we need you all. Amen. Iron sharpened iron. Hallelujah. Amen. Today I might be a nail, you might be a hammer, but we need each other to build. And Amen. next day I might be the hammer, you might be a nail, but we need each other to build. Amen. And to build the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. At this time, you know, I invite you to stand as we go into a time of worship this morning. Hallelujah. Shall we give ourselves a way to, to God this morning? You know, the Bible declares that the spirit understands the spirit. Amen. You know, and when we worship, you know, ask God, ask the Holy Spirit to help us to enter the realm of the spirit. You understand that we may see the unseen and we can war and we can fight and we can take back. And in this way, amen, yokes and bondages, bars of iron are broken. Amen. And we can take back from the enemy. Hallelujah, it's time for us to arise. Arise as the army of God. Arise, amen. And fight and to take back. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Are you ready to enter into that room? Just begin to talk to him. No looking around. Jesus, look to Jesus.
for you. Shout out to God. We live for you. We got to shout out. We lift your name up. Just we lift your name up.
morning, you're going to claim your victory. Amen. Yeah, the battle is already won as you put it in the hands of God. Because he is a winner man. He never lost a battle. Amen. Yeah, and you got to prove God to know that. When you go through your battle, say, Lord, I cannot fight it, but I want you to fight it for me on my behalf. And he will do it. condolences to sister Sarah in the back there who have lost her brother recently. Amen. On behalf of the Word of, of Faith Gospel Tabernacle, we extend our condolences to you, sister Sarah, that God will comfort you and strengthen you. Amen. As you were not able to be with your family at that time, but God will give you the strength this morning as we continue to pray for her this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. You will be seated this morning as I hand right over to Pastor this morning. Praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a big clap. Hallelujah. Our battles are already won. Hallelujah. Man, what appropriate worship this morning. Hallelujah. Our battles are won. Hallelujah. There's already fire in this place. Many of you have been touched, saved, healed, delivered, and set free right where you are. Because in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. Your stress have gone. Spirits of depression and frustration have taken their flight. You are touched in Jesus' name. Once again, a pleasant good morning to each and every one of you. Happy to have you in the house of the Lord. And those that are viewing via the social media, we say a special welcome to you. I know that God has a word for each and every one of us. Wherever you might be, whatever part of the world you might be, God has a word for you. Because God is always on time. He's never late. He's always on time. God wants to touch you. God wants to bless you. God wants to heal you. Deliver you and set you free. And God wants to give you the victory. And to be a winner man. As well as a winner woman. Come on give the Lord a big clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. This morning, I'll be continuing on part two of God of Vengeance. Last day, we had a great time. And for my text, it will be taken from Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 to 15. Romans chapter 12, verse 19. And Luke chapter 22, verse 42. So you can hold your scriptures. As we go to Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 to 15. And God is speaking here. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. And above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shall thou go, and dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. Verse 15 says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Romans chapter 12 verse 19 speaks about this God of vengeance. Romans 12 19 it says here 
Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. And Jesus was the one who came to do that, to bruise the head of the serpent. Luke chapter 22 verse 42, it says, and Jesus is speaking here, he says, praying in the garden of Gethsemane, where he was tested or tried before he had to go to the cross. He says, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Jesus cried out, already feeling the agony of the cross. He said, Lord, if you could remove this cup from me, remove it. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. God of vengeance, part two. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time of praise and worship that already put the atmosphere, that has put, Lord, the environment for your presence. We thank you for being here, Lord, with us. You said when two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst. Thank you for touching us, for healing us, for making us whole and well and bringing us into that place of having that one-on-one -on -one relationship with you, Lord. That we could walk and talk with you, Jesus. Bless us this morning. Take us to higher heights and deeper depths in Christ. That we'll truly be who you want us to be. As children of God. And victorious people. Because you have already fought the battle. And you have the victory. And because you won that battle, we have the victory. We are winners in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answering every prayer. In Jesus' name. Hide me behind the cross. These are not my words. They are yours. Speak to us today. In Jesus, by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a big clap this morning. God of vengeance. Part two. When God did creation, He spoke the word, and all these things appeared. But the best part of his creation was man. And what did he do? Did he speak the word? No. He took his own hands and formed man. And he took his own breath and blew it into man. And man became a living soul. Each and every one of you are wonderfully made. We are made by God's hand. God blew his breath into us. So therefore, when God created man with his own hands, it was the best part of his creation. Where he took his own hands and molded man. It was the epitome, the highest point of God's creation. And God knew it. And he said it was good. And the devil knew it as well. And what is important that when God created man, he gave man free will. The best part of his creation, the epitome of his creation, he gave man free will to choose whatever he wishes to do. Now that is a great chance that God took with man. Not so? The best part of his creation. He puts him there. He puts him in the garden of Eden. And gives him choice. Free will. He said there now you have all the fruits of the garden from every tree to eat. And enjoy life here in this garden of Eden. Wonderful place. 
with no blistering sun, no rain to beat your backs. The day used to be cool and wonderful, all the flowers and all the animals that were there. But one tree, he said, but of that tree, do not partake of it. Because the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. So God gave man choice. He gave him a free will. He did not make man as a robot. And said only what I have programmed you to do. Do. No. God gave man a free will. God knew it. And also the devil knew it. So it had to be a test now. With man in the midst, God on one side and the devil on the other side, to see what would be man's choice in his life. Would he choose God or would he choose to obey the devil? And there it was, you know the account very well. The serpent beguiled Eve. He said, No. God didn't say, God did not mean the day you eat of that, you shall surely die. You will become so smart and so wise. And you will know good and evil. And you will become like gods. Come on, G-O-D-S. And she became very curious. And she wanted to really know it, what it would be like. So here it was. Having free will and free choice. Being influenced by the devil. And yet being directed and influenced by God. Because even before that they used to meet with God and God used to speak with them. Every day in the coolness of the day he will come and chat with them. Speak with them. Give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And he would instruct them about the things of life. But here it was, choice came. And as you, we read in the scriptures, she fell for that temptation. And she ate of that fruit that God had told them, do not eat. And she encouraged her husband and he did eat. And that is how sin came into their lives. Sin came because of disobedience. Where you had a choice to choose between doing what the devil says and doing what God says. And in a very simplistic sense, that is what sin is. Disobedience to God. They saw their nakedness. And the best part of God's creation, the epitome, that which God took his own hands and made and blew his breath into it, that was his pride. Became defective because of sin. Are you following me? Could you understand what I'm saying here this morning? Just imagine you have the best thing that you pride yourself in. You have bought a brand new vehicle. The next morning you get up and you see it totally damaged. Wouldn't it hurt you? Or stolen? It will hurt you because you made a great investment in that. We are worth more than that to God. And it hurt God when man chose to disobey him and obey the devil. But guess what? God took up the challenge. He said, all right, I can't do anything. I gave man free will and free choice. I am the one who gave him that. So he was free to make a choice. That is what man shows. But I have a plan. 
God always has a plan, friends. Regardless of how ever, or whatever things may be going on in your life. However you may feel down and out. Oppressed, depressed, frustrated, given up. Let me tell you something. Hold on to Jesus. Because God has a plan for you. Hallelujah. God has a plan for you. And the scripture in, in, in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. Where he said, I, where he cursed the serpent and he said, I will put enmity between you and the seed of the woman. He shall bruise your head. But thou shalt bruise his heel. God went into a battle mode. With man in the midst. The devil on one side and God on the other side. And he said, all right. We have a contest. Let us see who will win this battle. God never gives up on any battle. God never gives up on any challenge. And God has never given up on you. Come on, come on. Because guess what? <laughs> He's a winner man. Come on, come on, come on. This morning I want you to stand. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. And as we sing these little pieces of this song in between, I want you to know that God has never given up on you. He wants you to be a winner man. To be a winner. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. So as we play these songs in between, hallelujah, it's to build your faith as we progress with the message this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a fantasy, a fantasy. Satan, it's a fantasy, a fantasy. Satan, fell, they were disobedient to God. How did God win? That was just first wrongs. <laughs> Come on, give the Lord a big clap. Amen. That was just first wrongs. Hallelujah. Because the battle continues. It is not over when God says. It is not over. It is all only over when God says it's over. That was just wrong one. 
Let's go. So as the account continued, Adam and Eve, even in their sin, they had two children, Cain and Abel. Again, we see the principle of choice. As the Bible would indicate, Cain chose not to serve God. But his brother Abel chose to serve God. Who are you choosing to serve today when God has given you the free will of choice? The Bible says, Abel, at every appointed time, he would bring his offering. And he would call on the name of the true and the living God. The God who created his mother and father and out of whom he came. And he did it with pleasure and God was pleased with the way he called on him and the way he served him. Are you following me? But Abel did not choose to serve God. He chose to live life and do things his own way. Are you following me? And that is humanity today. Many people would make a choice to serve God. Others would choose not to do that. Isn't that reflective of you and I today? Thank God. Many of you have already made the right choice. At some point in time, through situations and circumstances, you chose to serve God like Abel did. Come on, give the Lord a big clap. Hallelujah. And when Cain saw that his brother was pleasing to God, he decided to put an end to this. That here is the, after his mother and father displeased God. Now his brother Abel decided to bring back that relationship with God. But Cain decided to put an end to that. Let me tell you something in life. And even as I speak, we speak in terms of what is happening today in our lives. When you choose to serve God, do you think the devil likes that? When you decide to come in the house of the Lord and sing praises unto him and glorify and magnify his name and choose to make the right decisions in life. Hallelujah. Do you think the devil likes that? No, he wants to put an end to that. Just as Cain decided to put an end to that. Cain did not want to serve God. He did not want anybody to serve God. The devil doesn't want to serve God and submit to God. He doesn't want anybody to submit to God. Very simple but powerful message. So he killed his brother. And he thought, because inspired by the devil, to put an end to this thing of serving the true and the living God. Satan wants everybody to use their free will and their free choice to serve him. That is why the Bible says, the road that leads to destruction is broad. And there are many that are found in it. But the road that leads to eternal life is narrow and there are few that find it. So the devil pulls people away from God. So he killed his brother and thought, well, I have put an end to this thing of man wanting to serve God. But guess what? You see, God is in a long-term battle, you know. God doesn't give up easily. God does not give up easily. So guess what? Adam and Eve decided to have another son. They would have had other children, but decided to have another son. And his name was Seth. And Seth decided to serve God. Unlike his brother, his elder brother, Cain, who killed Abel, who was serving God. 
And the Bible says, and this is where it gets better. Because they were experiencing all these things and heard of all that took place. That Seth had a son. And his name was Enoch. And you could get that in Genesis chapter 5 verse 26. Put it up on the screen. His name was Enoch. And guess what? Enoch decided that he would serve God. Enoch decided that he would serve God. Let us look from, from verse 22. Genesis chapter 5, verse 22. Just verse 22, yes. And it says, And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. Verse 23 says, And all the days of Enoch were 300 years. Sixty and five years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Come on, come on, hallelujah, hallelujah. So whereas the enemy took, told that he was bringing an end to man calling on the name of God, one man, so far out of that generation, decided, I want to serve God. And the Bible says, and he walked with God. He remembered how his mother and father before their fall used to walk and talk with God. Hallelujah. And he developed that relationship. Hallelujah. Walking and talking with God and having a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. Hallelujah. And God loved him and God blessed him. Hallelujah. You know how long it took after the death of Abel who was doing the same thing how long it took for a man to have a desire for God again approximately 200 years 200 years God had to wait for another person To have a desire and use his own will. And say, I don't want to hear what the devil has to say. I want to hear what God has to say. I am using my own will. Hallelujah. And I'm going to worship God. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to bless his holy name. And it pleased God. How long? When you look at your own life. And you calculate since you get saved. How long did it take you and I to have a desire to use your will to serve God? You see the message this morning? Some of us have to read 50 years. 50 years God was waiting on you to come and surrender your life to him. And say God I love you. God I praise you. God I bless your holy name. God I magnify your name. I surrender my will to your will. It's not my will but your will be done in my life. It may have taken somebody 25 years. That God brought you into this world. And after 25 years then you decide to serve him. God had to wait 200 years before another man could say, I submit my will to you, not to the devil. Your decision that you have made in your life is like Enoch saying, God, I surrender my all to you. And the Bible says God loved this boy so much. Because he decided to serve him out of his own free will. God used to meet with him and walk and talk with him. The Bible says, and he walked with God, you know. And God said, hear me. Boy, I love you too much to let this world corrupt you. One day while he was walking and talking with God, he just disappeared. 
Because God say, hear me, I want you with me. I want you to be with me in heaven. I want to spend time with you. We need to talk more. We need to walk more. I need you to come and experience my blessing. And that, what happened to Enoch, is a type of the rapture. Hallelujah. As we are the church today, we need to walk and talk with God. So when Jesus comes, hallelujah, he will take us up to be with him out of a troubled world. God works in types and anti-types. Are you following me? He always gives you a pattern of things to come. God wants us to have that relationship with Him. So guess what? God won wrong too. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a big clap as we sing that song again. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. It's a fun to see Satan lose that, that part of the battle, you know. He lost. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Fun to see, how fun to see. Satan lose. It's a fun to see, how fun to see. waited for you and I to give our lives to him. Amen. God was waiting like the, the father and the prodigal son. I wonder when he's going to come home. You know many of us could have died long time and gone to a Christless eternity because of our reckless lifestyle, because of the choice we made that was unacceptable to God. But God extended his grace toward you and I and said, I'll wait, I'll wait a little longer. I'll wait a little longer. I'll send somebody to tell you about Jesus. Hallelujah. And that is how you and I came. And sometimes thank God for the troubles. Thank God for the hardship. Thank God for the sickness. Thank God for the problems. Hallelujah. Because we came to that point where we realized we need you, Jesus. Nothing else could help. Nobody else could help. But Jesus, only you. That is why I surrender my life, my will, my purpose into your hands. So you don't have to thank God for your troubles too, you know. The way the, the enemy had us blinded. God allowed certain things to happen to us. So that we could put things to the test. And realize that Jesus came through for you and I. That's why we are blessed today. Don't ever give up on that Jesus, friend. Not a part of this battle. Well, Enoch was taken up. God wanted to see, you know, who else would serve him. You see, God will always gives us the choice and free will. The man who was serving God and pleased God, God took him away. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 and 7, In verse 1, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. That verse 1. 
and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took upon them wives of all that with their chose and the Lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh yet his days shall be 120 years and there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men that they bear children to them and the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown and God saw the wickedness of man which was great in the earth and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So here we see. Wickedness started to pervade and take over the world again. Nobody to call on the name of the Lord. Nobody. Nobody. You know, God would have been feeling, I created man and man reject me. Man criticized me. Man turned their back on me. But I'm waiting. I'm having patience. I will have lots of patience to see who. And God said, you know the account very well. I will destroy this earth. And when he was looking to see if there was any that would have called on his name, he saw one family. The whole earth at that time, he saw one family, Noah and his family. And he said, all right, Noah, I'm going to be on your side. Bill and up. You and your family would be saved. Still send out the message and see who will come in. Who at least want to call on my name? No other human being came in, only Noah and the animals. And God destroyed the earth because of wickedness. And guess what? The devil was happy. He got a whole lot of people on his side. Amen. Do you think it's a nice thing in your village when there's a funeral and to know that an unsaved person just died and they're going on to the cemetery? Do you think that's a good thing? Do you think God is happy about that? Do you think you should be happier about that? No, no, no. That's why you have to work for God. Tell them about Jesus. Come on, tell them. Lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In their home, they have their needs, their problem, their situation. Go and pray for them. Witness. Tell them about the goodness of God. Who knows at that last moment at their last breath, they will call on the name of the Lord and be saved. So God destroyed the earth. So it would have appeared that Satan won that part of the battle. But God doesn't give up. God doesn't give up. Another battle that came was at the Tower of Babel. After the flood and so on and people started to multiply again. All that time, just one man and his family called on God. And even when God brought him in that new place, he and all became careless. You know sometimes God brings us in a new place in our lives. Guess what? We have been crying out and asking, God, I need you. God, I need you to touch me. God, I need your blessing upon my life. Hallelujah. Lord, I don't have a job. I need a job. God, I need a house. I need a vehicle. Lord, I need something in my life. Lord, take me out of depression and oppression and frustration and poverty. Oh God, all this trouble that I'm going to. I'm crying out to you. God, take me to a new level. Take me to a new place. And guess what? God brought you to a new level. God brought you to a new place. But guess what? When we reach that place, we become complacent. But I don't really need to call on the name of the Lord again. I have all that I ask God for. And guess what? I'm blessed here and answered my prayer. Do you think you should stop there? Be careful of complacency. Always remember the goodness of God. And guess what? You haven't seen anything yet. If you think that is all the blessing, friends, I have news for you. You have seen nothing as yet. God has more blessing in store for you. God has a better job, a a promotion. He has more money. He has better things in place for you. Don't give up yet. That's the trick of the enemy. So Noah, who God saved from the flood, came out there. He lived for God for a while and then he started to drink rum and carry on. Check the, the story of Noah. Started to plant grapes. 
And the grape juice was tasting so nice. He fermented and he started to drink and get drunk and he started to forget God. Sometimes all the niceties and nice things that we have in life brings us to a place of complacency that we are God again. We have had enough. Be careful. Be careful. As just as you get it, you're going to lose it. And the Bible says that that was how it was going. So people were now after Noah, nobody started calling on God. And guess what? They were coming together and evil against God. They started to build a tower called the Tower of Babel. Where they were all agreeing with oneness of mind, oneness of purpose to build a tower, but in disobedience to God. God never asked them to do that. And in Genesis chapter 11, verse 6 to 9. Hear what the Bible says. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them. Which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down. And they confound their language. That they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them. Abroad from thence unto the face, upon the face of the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore, is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. They were now coming together. Whereas they should have been coming together to serve God, to live for Him, to please Him in oneness and one accord, they came together to go against God. Are you following me? Let me tell you something. As human beings, take heed to this. Eh? If you alone have to serve God, you better stand up. Tell others, preach the word, encourage them. But it may come that you alone have to serve God, serve Him. You alone in your family, serve God. In the fullness of time, God will save them. But don't join with others in going against God and the things of God. God will bring judgment upon you. Don't join people with your nonsense that comes against the things of God. It is the recipe for your fall and for your demise. Stay far from that. Commerce, confusion, all these kind of things, even in the church, careful with that. Say, brother, when they come to you with things, say, brother, it's better we pray about that. And done with that. Pull yourself out of that. You're bringing yourself into harm, harm's way, that you could be hurt from God. So there we see in people now for a long period of time, maybe about a thousand years, were not calling on God. Remember, God gave man free choice and free will. Are you following me? You see how much patience God has? You see how much patience God had upon you and I? For how many years we know we're not serving Him and we're doing our own things? God has patience. But guess what? In the midst of all of that, God has a plan. Do you know that same thing that happened at the top of Babel where God brought confusion? And people couldn't understand each other's language. God counteracted that when He sent the Holy Spirit. When you look at Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, come on, come on, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. You see, God never gives up. God always has a plan and a long term plan. That's why we say sometimes in the fullness of time, in the fullness of time, Jesus came and he died. He went on the cross and he sent his Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Hallelujah. Compare that. Compare that. Compare that. To the Tower of Babel. What they were doing? They were in one accord. They were in unity in one place doing something contrary to God. But in Acts of the Apostles, hallelujah, 
He said they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You see the thing about language came back again? God confused them at the top of Babel. They couldn't understand each other. But on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost, when these people, these 120 men, started to call on the true and the living God, God said, I'm going to counteract that. Where I set men apart that they couldn't understand each other. I'm going to bring men together now with one understanding to serve me in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. To live for me, to lift up my name and magnify my name. And hear what? And they were dwelling in Jerusalem. And Jews, devout men of every nation under heaven. And when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Do you see how long it took God to bring back the situation of dividing men because of language? And it all happened because of Jesus. Jesus went, died, sent the Holy Spirit. And what happened, the negativity that happened at the top of Babel was made positive when the Holy Spirit came and filled men. That people who were not Christians, who were not believers, they were hearing the wonderful words of God. They were hearing praise and worship going on. Hallelujah. And people calling on the name of the, of the Lord their God from people who never studied language. They were hearing these praise and worship and prayer and words of God from people who couldn't even speak their language. They were hearing in those other languages. You see, Jesus came to unite people in oneness with God. Are you following me? On the day of Pentecost. Isn't that a battle that was won? Amen. You think the devil felt good about that? Say so it's a fantasy. A fantasy. Satan lose. Come on, give the Lord a big clap. Stand up a little. Stand up a little. Uh, uh, hallelujah. Make some noise. Make some noise this morning. God of vengeance have won the battle for me.
coming to an end. We're coming to an end. Are you enjoying this morning? Hallelujah. Let me tell you, you know, Lord God waiting on you to call on his name. Hallelujah. He's giving you a free choice, free will. You must do it freely. Nobody is going to force you. God, Jesus is a gentleman. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open, I will come unto him. And he will sup with him. And he with me. You have to do it freely, friends. Hallelujah. And you know, because of that, on the day of Pentecost, the church was born. The church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ, was born. Why are you sitting here today in this church, in this local church? Because you became a part of the universal church. Someday you accepted Jesus and you knew him as your Lord and Savior. Many of us came from all sorts of crazy background, many crazy habits and ways and attitudes, things, man. We wouldn't even like to tell people the things we used to do long time. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Who has saved us. And made us part of his body. The Ecclesia. That is victory, friends. And guess what? This is not all here. You have brothers and sisters all over the world. Hallelujah. Some being persecuted. Hallelujah. Many are, are still today giving their life to Jesus. Many services are going on all over the world. And people are giving their life to Jesus. They are coming out of darkness. They are coming out of the clutches of the enemy. And surrendering their all freely. Giving their life freely to Jesus Christ. That is victory for us. That's why God don't give up. God doesn't give up on anybody. God does not give up. Free will. And the best example of exercising free will is Jesus. When Jesus came, he did wonderful miracles. He opened the eyes of the blind, healed the sick, made the lame to walk. And as he coming closer to his crucifixion, he entered into Jerusalem. And the people were so excited. Hallelujah. And we coming close to that. Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Man, they were so excited. Jesus came in on a donkey. And they cut the branches, the palm branches and spread it. Took off their cloaks. And they spread it. They made a carpet for Jesus to enter into Jerusalem. Because they realized, here comes the king. Hallelujah. They were filled with, with exuberance and excitement. But after that, some of the same people who were so excited to have him as king. Guess what they said? Crucify. Crucify him. Crucify him. All because of the influence of the devil. So an innocent man who had done no wrong, had done all those good, who never sinned. They trumped up charges against him. They said, crucify him. So even on the build up of, for that, Jesus was in the garden of Eden. Not, not Eden. Another garden, sorry. The garden of Gethsemane. And I want you to look at this, eh? How God does bring some great pictures. Adam and Eve were in a garden. Are you following me? Remember this garden. God loves some, some picturesque things in our lives to bring us to understanding. Adam and Eve were tested in a garden. The garden of Eden. Jesus was also tested in a garden. Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden, they succumbed because of their free will to Satan and his influence. Are you following me? 
So God allowed Jesus to also be in a garden. The garden of Gethsemane. And he was also there to be tested. Because the enemy was on one side pressuring him. Because here, remember, Jesus came in the flesh. He had flesh just like you and I. He would feel pain. He would feel the agony. He would feel all those things that you and I feel today. And on the other hand, he knew that he came with a purpose to give his life, to shed his blood, to change man and the direction man was going. Because there would hardly be people who would worship and praise God. You see how long God had to wait for one or two men to call on his name. And even some of the prophets who came and called on the name of the Lord, they killed them. And here Jesus was between these two situations to make a choice. He could have succumbed to the flesh and say, Oh gosh, I can't take that. Father, I can't take it. That is why it is said, and you could put up that scripture, Luke chapter 22, verse, verse 42. Feeling the agony, he started to sweat, and out of his, his brow started to fall. Like blood started to drain out because of the pain, because of the agony, because of the testing that he was going through to make a choice. And he cried out, he said, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Father, I know you sent me to do a job. I know you sent me to shed my blood and die for the sins of the world. To change a wrong situation, to bring a new thing into the human race. So that men could call upon you again. And he was feeling that pain. But he said, oh devil. I have so come into you. I have a free choice. Just as Adam and Eve had a free choice. You know, Adam was called the first Adam. Jesus was called the second Adam. Why? Because he would have been tested just like Adam and Eve would have been tested in the Garden of Eden. So the second Adam said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to succumb. I'm not going to succumb to this. To what the first Adam did. I am going to obey God. I am going to obey God. And that's why he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Come on, give the Lord a big clap. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Hallelujah. You see, friends, that is the choice that you and I have to make. Yes. We could be in some very precarious situations. We have a choice to make. We could take the easy road. We could take the broad road. But are you willing to make the choice into the narrow road? It is not so nice. It is not so pleasant. There are testings and trials. And Jesus says, nevertheless, Lord, I'm not going to surrender my will to the devil. I know it is painful. I know they will have to carry me to Calvary. I know they will have to beat me. I know they will have to kill me. And stick me at the side. And out of my side will come blood and water. I'm not taking the easy road. Because I want to do your will. And guess what? Jesus did the will father and that is why today we have so much blessings in our lives the bible says with his stripes we are healed 
That is why many of us who were dying and we call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He touches, he heals us, he makes us whole and well. He brought us from death unto life. Hallelujah. Miracles upon miracles. Hallelujah. Healing, deliverance. Hallelujah. Blessed financial breakthrough. He brought us back out of depression and oppression and frustration. And he gave us a new life. Because of the blood he shed on Calvary. Where he shed his blood for the remission of sin. That we were able to come one day and say, Lord, forgive me. Cleanse me. Lord, my life is messed up. I'm undone, Lord. I'm unworthy. Hallelujah. This wretch like me, oh God. I need you to save me. I need you to wash me in your precious blood. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Save me, deliver me, and set me free. Lord, I am using my own free will. I'm coming freely. Nobody's forcing me. I'm coming freely. And I surrender my whole to you. That is why God has brought us out of darkness into his marvelous, his marvelous light. To enjoy what you enjoy today. But again I say you ain't see nothing yet. There are still more physical blessings for each and every one of us. Plus we have better than this in the hereafter to be with the Lord forever. Come on, give the Lord a big clap this morning. Give the Lord a big clap. <laughs> Nevertheless, not my will. But let your will be done. Friends, this life is not all here. This life is not all here. We have a better place. We have greater victories. Amen. And Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. If you could put it up quickly. Hallelujah. You would realize uh, the kind of blessings and victory that God has for us. He said and, and had raised us up together. And made us sit together in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. Friends. God has more blessings for you and I here. But there is a better place to be with him in glory, to sit with him in glory and enjoy all that he has in store for you and I. But the choice is yours. The choice is mine. Let us make the right choice. God will not force anybody, friends. And we have that because of Jesus. This morning we sang that song. Kimta, you could help us out. You, you have the chords and everything. Victor's crown. Hallelujah. Victor's crown. That's why I said the, this, the worship was so appropriate this morning. Let's all stand and receive your victory. Receive your victory. Receive your victory this morning. Hallelujah. We praise and we bless your holy name. Lord, we magnify your holy name. Come on, worship team. Come on, just raise that song and realize that we are victors. We are conquerors. Hallelujah. God has won the battle for us. Hallelujah. God of vengeance has won this battle for us. You were always fighting for us. Heaven's angels all around. Mighty light is found in no way that you wear the victor's crown. You're my help on my defender. You're my savior.
people this morning. Break every chain, break every shackle, break every yoke. Right now, right now, you feel to, certain things are happening in you. Certain things shaking up and breaking up inside of you. Hallelujah. Touch your people this morning. Break it out, break it out, break it out. Lord my God, break the clutches of the enemy from over their life. Break it out this morning. Break those chains and those shackles over their life. Be broken, be broken, be broken. Lord, help them to surrender their will. Wherever you are and you say, Lord, I want to surrender my will, say this prayer after me. Say, dear God, I've heard your word and I realize that it's not my will, but your will should be done in my life. Forgive me of my sins, my iniquities, my shortcomings, my failures. Wash me with your precious blood. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay and help me to live for you every day of my life until I see you face to face. Thank you for saving my soul and for making me whole. And those of you that are viewing before we break, I pray that God will touch you wherever you are. That God will save you, deliver you and set you free. As you surrender your will to God, it is no more surrendering your will to the enemy, but say, God, I surrender my all to you. Touch your people this morning. Turn their lives around because they have the victory. Because Jesus won the battle on Calvary. And we have the victory. Come on, come on. Because Jesus won the, the battle on Calvary. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Touch your people, touch your people. Touch them this morning. And they surrender they all to you. Those that are sick, I pray that you heal them. For with your stripes, for with your stripes, with the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Thank you, thank you. So those of you that are viewing until next time, may God richly bless you. Those that are viewing on this stream, God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.